seeing my two sleeping babies um, under a bunch of blankets in front of the fireplace that was slowly going out was heartbreaking. Feeling helpless and hopeless without power and water for days in Texas. The winter weather had crippled the electrical grid, leaving thousands in the cold. So the question is, are we protected from a similar crisis happening here in Ohio? News 5's Jay Jarvis talked to an energy expert to find out. No heat, no running water, and no power. Oh, what a nightmare. Oh my God. People in Texas doing what they can to survive a crisis that's left several people dead and so many more displaced. This is something that it, it's, it's beyond historical, beyond unprecedented. It's a chain reaction of worst case scenario of worst case scenarios. It all started with the cold. Grant Goodrich, the executive director of the Great Lakes Energy Institute at Case Western Reserve University, says in Texas, most people rely on electricity for heat. And so as the temperatures plunged, most Texans turned up the heat to keep their homes, businesses and buildings warm. And it, it really pushed unprecedented demand onto the grid in Texas. Texas's electrical grid is separated from two main grids that serve the rest of the country, so they couldn't tap into other states' power sources to keep up with the surge. It does sound from what we're hearing from Texas that there were maintenance issues. Uh, cold is typically not a problem, but cold combined with ice makes repairs and maintenance difficult. Goodrich says there are several reasons why a widespread outage like the one in Texas is unlikely to happen in Ohio. First, most Ohioans use natural gas to heat their homes. So if a major distribution center was to fail, that would probably be the only scenario where we would see something like this. Also, peak electricity usage usually comes in the summer when people are running their ACs. And there's a way to manage that so the grid isn't overloaded. Our regional grid will ask major users to reduce their energy consumption during peak hours so that they can balance the amount of power generation that's coming in. Ohio's also on one of the two major national power grids. So if the state lost power locally, companies could get electricity from outside of the state. And if that fails, there are two nuclear power plants in northern Ohio. Nuclear has you know, tended to be very reliable throughout uh, its lifetime regardless of the weather and the conditions. Goodrich says since we're used to cold winters in Ohio, electricity providers typically do regular maintenance to make sure their systems are in working order before the cold weather comes along. Utilities tend to be pretty tight-lipped about their maintenance cycle and about the age of their equipment. But the age of those systems could be a concern, and if not addressed soon, could put Northeast Ohio at risk. Jay Jarvis, News 5. As Jade mentioned, aging equipment could be a problem. In 2019, the Cleveland section of the American Society of Civil Engineers gave Northeast Ohio's energy infrastructure a D grade on its report card. It said while energy companies are doing a good job maintaining the existing system, more long-term upgrades are needed.